Yesterday, Siraji spoke about two causes for samadhiti, that is, jnana or knowledge, to arise. And these are according to what the Buddha taught. And it's very clear. So one who wants one's life, one's physical, verbal, and mental behaviors to become free of fault, one who wants one's behavior to become refined and cultured and to cool off the heat of the kilesas and gain peace. One who wants a life that is truly uh, enjoyable and delightful. One just needs to try to develop knowledge if this is what one wants. So knowledge is very important. And the Buddha mentioned two causes for humans to develop knowledge. And the first is paratogosa. That means learning the correct method, hearing about the correct method from a good spiritual friend. This means that one can't just do as one thinks, or one can't just guess about the practice. One actually needs to learn it from someone who knows. So it's said, if we don't know the method true, then study, learn it till we do. So to study means to, how do we study the method? We hear about it, we listen to it, and we discuss So, with hearing and discussion, that's how we learn about the practice. And every day, um, the path of practice is being pointed out, the path of how to develop knowledge. And the meditation teachers also are discussing the practice every day. So, uh, it's said that we... When we don't know the method true, then study, learn it, till we do. Reading reliable books is also a way we can learn about the Dhamma, about the practice. But until a writer gains knowledge, they may make errors in what they write because they write about what they think. So unless the writer has gained knowledge, they may be wrong. So here we study the method of practice from the Buddhist text. And also, in one's body, there are many things to be known. So this is the second thing that we need to have in order to develop knowledge. It said, Ajatansa, Yoni Somana Sikaro. We have to observe what is arising in our being. And these are, what is arising in our being is nyaya, that which is to be known, that which is knowable. There's an amazing assortment of things happening inside us. So the second point is, if we don't know what's knowable, then note, observe it, so we will. So that means that every seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking, every bending, stretching, uh, leaning the head, lifting, moving, placing, opening, closing the eyes, and blinking, all these happenings in our body are to be observed. Of course, at the start we can't note them all, but we have to have the determination to catch them all. Only when we have that type of determination will we become able to catch them. And so it said, if we don't know what's knowable, then note, observe, so that we will. So these are the two factors for knowledge to arise. 
according to what the Buddha said in the suttas. And when these two factors are present, then knowledge occurs. And this is no small thing. If we don't know what's knowable, note, observe it, so we will. What does it mean to note and observe? This is, uh, in Burmese, the word is shu. And in English, note, observe. In Pali, it's the word anupasana. That means to look and see, to know. If we don't look, we won't see and we won't know. But we can't just do it once. We can't just do it for a morning or we, or an hour, hour or a few days. We have to take a lot of time. We have to take many, many days to observe. And in the old days, pe- people were quick. So they could understand the teaching of the Buddha very quickly. Although in the old days, there were people who took a long time too. These days, we need to take a lot of time to develop the practice. In the word anupasana, the word, the prefix anu means repeatedly. So we have to observe again and again. And in Burmese, we just say shu, or in English, observe. The ordinary mind. The ordinary mind has no power at all. So in order to observe, we need to create mental power. This is like using glasses to see what would ordinarily be unclear to us with our um, with our bare naked eye in order to see very small things we may use a magnifying glass or a microscope to increase the ordinary power of the eye and so too in order to observe in the practice we have to add powers to the mind. So what are these powers that we need to add? This is something we must know. To see what we can't see with the ordinary eye. We'll only be able to see such things with glasses. Only if these, if we put on glasses will be, will we be able to see things that we aren't able to see with the ordinary eye. We expand the power, the seeing power of our eye by using instruments like a microscope or a magnifying glass. We can increase the power 10 times or 20 times so that then we can uh, see and know, see and know the very small things that we need to know. The Buddha said in the outline uh, part of the Satipatthana Sutta, that's called Odesa in Pali, the Buddha said, what is needed for this anupasana, observing power, to arise? And the Buddha mentioned three qualities, and the commentaries include a fourth, because when the first three qualities are present, this fourth quality will also be there. It can't be separated from them. So the first quality, the first word that the Buddha mentioned was atapi. That means that the yogi must have energy that can burn up the kilesas. The yogi has to have ardent effort, uh, wholehearted effort, Only if effort is ardent and wholehearted will sati arise. This word ardent or wholehearted means that it 
can't, the effort can't be casual, the effort to observe the object. We can't be sleepy. The effort needs to be alert and active, not sluggish. This type of effort is called atapa. And one who possesses such effort is called atapi. Only if this type of effort is there will anupasana occur. So these words, only if, they indicate a requisite, what is needed for something else to occur. They indicate a necessary condition for a, a certain result to occur. For anupasana, repeated observation, to occur, the yogi has to be able to note the objects arising without missing them. And for this to happen, ardent, wholehearted effort is needed. The Buddha spoke about observing repeatedly. The things to observe are four kinds. The Buddha uh, described four categories. Each of these is like a large field of observation. Kaya is the collection of physical objects. Vedana, or feelings, is the next. And then there's various thinking, planning, and so on, mental, uh, various types of citta, mind. And then there's general phenomena, various phenomena, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. So these are the four categories. Each of these is a field of observation within, within which small objects are arising. All these four things appear in one's body. One can observe any one of these, whatever is arising. So actions are arising in the body. They are evident. Feelings arise in the body. Thoughts, imaginations. Every time an object arises, one needs to push the mind to the, to the object so that sati will stick to it. And this effort to push the mind to the object is called atapa. One who works to push the mind to the object, to have this type of energy, is called atapi. And only if there is this type of effort to push the mind to the object will there be anupasana, repeated observation. When this ardent effort, wholehearted effort, is applied to observe the object, then mindfulness, sati, will arise. And when sati has arisen many times, it becomes steadfast. This, call, this is called patana. At that, when sati occurs many times, it becomes firmly established on the object. So it's mindfulness, which is firmly established, or sati, which is patana. So this second quality for anupasana to occur is called satima. That means there must be sati. One has to have sati. <clears throat> but not just an ordinary amount. One needs to have a lot of sati. And according to the effort that is made, if one makes effort ten times to observe the object, then there will be ten occurrences of sati. If one makes effort twenty times, then there will be twenty occurrences of sati. When sati becomes extremely strong, then defilements can't enter the mind. It protects the mind. And so it's praised um, as satima. Exceptional sati must be there. One has to have firmly established sati. Uh, mindfulness that is firmly established on the object of observation for anupasana to, to occur. So this is another type of observation or another facet of observation.
When one applies art and effort so that the mind reaches the object and sati sticks to it, then laziness can't arise. It has no chance to arise. Thus it is dispelled. When sati sticks to the object so that it is firmly established on the object, To that extent, to the extent that sati is firmly established on the object, defilements won't enter one's mind stream. And with observation, sati sticks. Therefore, the mind doesn't run anywhere. There's no movement of the mind due to loba, greed, dosa, anger, or moha, delusion. Therefore, samadhi naturally arises. The word samadhi is not mentioned in the Odesa, the outline portion of the Satipatthana Sutta. But when sati is present, samadhi, samadhi is there too. And therefore the commentary explains that samadhi must be present at this moment when sati is firmly established. So the mind won't run anywhere. There's no movement of the mind due to the kilesas. And therefore there's, the mind doesn't go to any type of sense desires, wanting to see good things, wanting to hear good things, smell, taste, touch, think. The, the mind doesn't go anywhere. In this way, when virya, sati, and samadhi, effort, mindfulness, and concentration occur every second of the time, this is called anupasana. And at this time, one is free of the obsessive kilesas, the pariyotana kilesas. In one's body, there are many things to be known. Kaya, physicality, vedana, feeling, chitta, mind, dhamma, the various phenomena, natural phenomena. These are the things to be known. So we observe the arising object. And when we apply art and effort so that mindfulness occurs, this is necessary in order for anupasana to occur. Applying art and effort, sati sticks to the object. Only if sati is present will anupasana occur. And when sati is firmly established on the object, the mind becomes collected on the object. And Thus, samadhi occurs. Only if samadhi occurs will anupasana occur. If one applies effort, sati will arise. And with enough sati, samadhi will arise. If we apply effort one second of the time, uh, then we'll have one moment of effort and sati samadhi. If we apply effort 60 seconds, then we'll have 60 moments. Even if we only note every other second, we will still have in one minute 30 30 moments of applying virya, sati, and samadhi. So if, if we don't know what's knowable, then note, observe, so that we will. So... We apply effort, mindfulness, and concentration. And eventually what happens is sampajano. Sampajano means one who knows. The yogi becomes one who knows through this repeated application of effort, mindfulness, and concentration. Sampajano comes from the word sampajanya, which means knowing or knowledge. 
Only if knowledge is there does anupasana occur. Early on in the practice, we don't know sabhava, the true nature of ph- phenomena yet. All we have is collectedness of mind. But as we continue the practice, when we observe rupa, we come to know rupa. When we observe vedana or feeling, we come to know the vedana. When we observe chitta or the mind, thinking, planning, and so on, we come to know the mind. When we observe the general phenomena, various acts of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, tasting, touching, we come to know these phenomena. We observe them, and thus we come to know. Thus it's said, if we don't know what's to be known, what's knowable, then know to observe so that we will. With effort, mindfulness, and concentration, virya, sati, and samadhi, the samadhi kanda, with these the mind is clean. If we look at the ocean when there's waves, then we won't be able to see a reflection in the water. If we, if, if there are things like mud uh, in the water, if the water is, has a lot of dirt in it, we also won't be able to see the reflection. But when water becomes still, then one can see one's reflection in it. It's like that with the mind. When the mind becomes clean, we see the appearance of rupa and nama. We see physicality and and mentality. We can see how these two are related by cause and effect. And we can see how they arise and pass away. They're not permanent. What is not permanent is inherently suffering. And it lacks a self. There's no self in it. Knowing this is called sampajanya. It happens because the mind is clean. Because the mind is clean and clear true nature becomes apparent. Because of the cleanliness of mind, the clarity of mind, well, there's no mental waves and there's no dirt of the kilesas with the presence of the samadhi kanda. And because of that stillness of the mind, the uh, reflection can arise, so to speak, the true true nature can become apparent to us. And this is called janya or pajana t one knows. So the Buddha said sampajanyo janya or sampajano. And sam in this means correctly. One has learned the correct method due to studying. So one knows correctly. One knows completely. When one knows nama, one knows it completely. One knows rupa. When one knows it, it, one knows it completely. And one knows for oneself, not just due to reading or reflecting. One knows directly for oneself. So this type of knowing, knowing being janya, uh, this type of knowing is expressed by the prefix san and janya, san janya. But the Buddha also added another prefix, pa, sampajanya. And this pa means one knows distinctly. So one can see clearly the difference between nama and rupa. One sees this is cause, that is effect. One sees the characteristics of impermanence, suffering, and selflessness. So one sees very distinctly. And one sees in a way that is better than knowing from reading a book or knowing from hearing about something. One, one knows in a special way. 
So altogether, it has a very special meaning, this word sampajanya. And although the Buddha could have simply used the word panya, which means wisdom, and then for the, uh, instead of atapi, the Buddha could have used a word uh, based on the word for energy, virya. But he didn't use these two words, panya or virya. He used the word atapa, atapi, which refers to an ardent, hot, hot effort, effort to push the mind to the object so that sati sticks to it. And so that the mind, uh, the mind can become collected on the object. And he used also the word sampajano or sampajanya, which means knowing correctly, uh, completely for oneself, knowing distinctly, correctly, knowing distinctly and completely, knowing for oneself distinctly, knowing in a special way correctly, knowing in a special way completely and for oneself. So because he wanted to express all these ideas, the Buddha used the word sampajanya or sampajano. So with, with effort, mindfulness and concentration, uh, that this makes the mind clean, and when the mind is clean, knowledge arises. Only if knowledge occurs does anupasana occur. And one who possesses this repeated observation uh, with knowledge called anupasana is called anupasi. Thus, the separate powers that make up anupasana are virya, sati, samadhi, and panya. And when one observes the arising, when one when the when one observes the arising physicality or kaya with this collection that is called anupasana, virya, sati, samadhi, and panya. Then this is kaya nupasana. When one observes the arising feeling with virya sati samadhi and panya, with anupasana, then this is vedana nupasana. When one observes the arising thinking, planning, and other mentality with this virya uh, sati samadhi and panya, then this is citta nupasana. When one observes the various phenomena of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and so on, with virya, sati, samadhi, and panya, this is dhamma nupasana. Because there are four kinds of objects, there are four kinds of anupasana, or repeated observation. So with every object that arises, one makes effort to observe the object. With effort, sati sticks to the object. Collectedness of mind arises. And then knowledge. Without knowledge, not knowing one clings. So if one encounters, if one doesn't observe, starting with making the effort to observe the object, without anupasana, one when one encounters a likable object, then there's loba. When one, when one encounters a dislikable object, there will be anger. But because of knowing, it's said that one dispels the greed and anger that can arise in one's being. Vinaya loke abeja dominasan. What is meant by loka, loke, it means that with regard to the arising kaya or physicality, with regard to the arising feeling, vedana, the arising thinking, planning, or citta, the arising seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, or dhamma, 
or in other words, <coughs> with, a, with regard to the arising rupa and nama, one dispels the greed and anger, the craving and sadness that would otherwise occur if we didn't apply the practice. And this is what is meant by vinaya loke abeja domanasam. Each time we apply an upasana, then we have momentary, um, momentary dispelling of these kalesas. This is called tadanga vinaya. Every noting we have this. And when we note again and again, the kilesas go far away. They become distanced. They become far away from our, from our mind. And so we have vikambana vinaya, dispelling them by making them very distance, distanced. So in every noting we have this tadanga, momentary dispelling, tadanga vinaya. And when our mental power becomes strong, then we have vikambana vinaya, or distancing of the kilesas. The yogis can get this benefit. And in essence, this means that the mind becomes clean. Why does it become clean? Why does this uh, benefit arise? It's because we make the effort to observe the arising object, whatever appears within the large field of observation. We make effort. There's sati, samadhi, and knowledge occurs. This is called anupasana. Only if virya, sati, samadhi, and panya are present does anupasana occur. So it said, if we don't know what's knowable, what's knowable is this kaya, vedana, chitta, and dhamma, these four kinds of objects, the individual objects that arise at any moment. And with regard to these, we, we dispel the kilesas. We don't give the kilesas a place to arise. We don't give them a chance. So this is because of knowing the correct method and because of observing directly with yoni somana sikara, observing the object directly. Because of these two, one gets the benefit of a clean mind due to anupasana. So today, Sieroji has explained the meaning of the phrase, if we don't know what's knowable, then note, observe, so that we will. And that's all he's going to talk about for today. Tomorrow, he is going to talk about how knowledge arises according to the Abhidhamma. That's all for today.